You heard Rivio Chung. You gonna react to the shady business of Jay Z. Say to become a billionaire, you gotta screw over a lot of people. Kind of like how Marcus stole Facebook, how William Gates, the sociopath, stole a bunch of Apple's ideas, y'all all know Elon be wildin', and none other than the Jigga Man, who today we're gonna use as an example. Now, this is no shade to Jay-Z, oh. he's just a perfect example because when he was coming up, he said he was a hustler. To be a billionaire, you gotta hustle, scam, bamboozle, and a lot of street hustling kind of connects to business. Now, Jay-Z had a problem, because remember, I just said to be a billionaire, you gotta screw over a lot of people. Some can see that as, ah, oh, this guy's a jerk. But Jay-Z is the face of his business. Like he says, I'm a business, comma, man. If you don't know how your commas work, he's basically saying he's a business. Now, if you are the business, your stocks can go up and down depending on you. Let me put it to you this way. If Elon Musk was this super nice guy who gave to charity all the time and he bought Twitter and it was failing, people would be like, man, that's tough for Elon. And a lot of people will probably help him out. Now we all know that's not Elon Musk. So people just laugh at him as Twitter crashes and burns and prays for his downfall. Now let's see how Jay-Z toes this balance perfectly with Tidal. Now if you don't know, Tidal was this music service that Jay-Z bought a while ago. He said, yo, this is gonna be the biggest thing in streaming. Spoiler alert, it wasn't. Now why Jay-Z started Tidal was actually a pretty good reason. Streaming platforms are not paying artists. So if he makes Tidal and he promotes Tidal, pays artists a whole bunch of money, people will love Tidal. And he actually did this by giving the most amount of revenue to artists. And he also made this whole grand production where a bunch of famous musicians. Yeah, Nicki Minaj there. Kanye West, J. Cole. Funny because Nicki Minaj not even is not even fucking with Jay Z after um Jay apparently like, you know, not not letting Lil Wayne like perform, you know. And Kanye West and Jay Z, they're not cool for, for some other reasons. I don't think Kanye and Jay Z are cool either. So. Came on stage signing We Own part of title. Jay-Z gave it to us. Everyone's like, whoa! Jay-Z like, so y'all finna sign up for Tidal? Everyone's like, no. Jay-Z said, but why? They said, cause I have Spotify already. But Jay-Z, you a good dude. He underestimated the fact that people were like, yo, Beyonce would be all right if I just go on Spotify. She's a millionaire, ain't that right, Jay-Z? Jay-Z said, well, now you can only get her album on Tidal, now what? People were like, mm, I don't really like that. And people just listened to another artist. It wasn't that deep. But at this point, people did not like Jay-Z. He had so much stock with the people that people were just giving him the benefit of the doubt. They're like, oh, he's a businessman. He's just trying to make a business move. It's annoying, but sure. Now, there was a few more album exclusives, but then Kanye West dropped his highly anticipated The Life of Pablo on Tidal exclusively. Now, people weren't tripping that Kanye's album was exclusively on Tidal. I think like 300 million people paid the subscription fee to listen to the album. Then a week later, Kanye drops the album on Apple Music. Everyone who paid the Tidal subscription felt scammed because the album was exclusively supposed to be released on Tidal. In fact, Tidal gets sued and it's starting to look really bad because at this point, people are only buying into this because Jay-Z is the savvy businessman and it's okay. But now it just seems Jay-Z, remember, he's the face of the business, is forcing people to pay to listen to their favorite artists and his business is failing, maybe he's not that Man. business that. So his reputation is taking a slight dip. So Jay-Z goes, oh snap, it's time to jump ship. So he hits up his friend, Jack Dorsey. Jack Dorsey founded Twitter. He's like, yo, Jack, you want to come on my yacht? Jack goes, M -m 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 me? Of course. Rich people still think famous people are famous. So Jack goes on vacation with Jay-Z. Jack sees Beyonce, he goes, that Beyonce? Jay-Z goes, yo, yo, I ain't gonna lie, Beyonce is fake cute. I ain't gonna lie, Beyonce is fake beautiful. She got the body and all that, bro. I ain't gonna lie. I don't blame Jay Z, bro, for bagging Beyonce, bro. I ain't gonna lie. I don't blame Jay. Uh, hey, you wanna buy a title? Jack goes, you're failing music service? Jay-Z said, now who said it's failing? Jack said, everybody online? Jay-Z goes, well, you can't believe everything you read. So Jack goes over to his shareholders and tells them, yo, we're buying title. They go, Jay-Z's failing music service? Jack said, now who said it's failing? They said these legal documents that title is obligated to show us, showing that they're failing. Jack said, well, you can't believe everything you read. We buying it for 300 million. They go, what the, they buy it. Jack's the boss. Now, title of course fails, but it had people questioning why did Jack do this? Because even though Jay-Z is Jay-Z, this is ridiculous. The shareholders thought the same thing, so they sue Jack. And here's where it starts to get wicked. There's something I forgot to tell you. A part of the deal where Jack and his company paid 300 million for title was Jay-Z, listen closely, gets on the board of directors for Jack's company. The board and the shareholders were like, what, what, Jay-Z said, what, 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 Jigga, 
I'm here now. So people were suspicious, including the judge. The judge was like, yo, so is he just like your friend and you just helped him out? Jack goes, no, I just thought it was a pretty good idea. The judge goes, well, you got the bag and fumbled it. Jack goes, I'm sorry? The judge goes, you got the bag and fumbled it. Jack goes, okay, I won't fumble the bag next time. My fault, judge. Judge goes, great, you're free to go. The shareholders were like, hey, yo. But in the judge's words, it's not criminal to make a bad business decision. In fact, I think the judge said a terrible business decision. The judge was like, this transaction was done in bad faith, but it didn't break the law. And now it's time for our story break with today's sponsor, Aura. Aura is able to monitor your Here, first things first, Jay-Z made it out, got $300 million, and I believe this was what pushed him to a billion. The shareholders screwed because they lost a bunch of money, but Jack is where it gets kind of interesting. People either think Jack got screwed or he was in on this with Jay-Z all along, meaning Jay-Z and Jack screwed over the businessman. You keeping up so far? So basically, Jack pays some of that $300 million to Jay-Z, which he can totally afford. Jack hangs out with Jay-Z, they swap ideas, they become friends, and continue to work together when it comes to making a bunch of money in the future win-win for both of them shareholders get none of this with Jay-Z and they just lose money an NYU business professor called this an expensive tab to hang out with Jay-Z now how does this make Jay-Z the hustler well he basically sold himself instead of title when he knew the business was failing he just went into the old hustlers playbook just pretend it's not failing and then sell it to a sucker at first he tried to sell it by pretending the number of subscribers were bigger than they were they did actual projections on his numbers and they're like bro you're like 10 times below what you said you're doing Jay-Z's like see those numbers again oh companies were like oh no jay-z was like but i'm jay-z though again in comes jack dorsey jay-z either hustles jack or jay and jack hustle the shareholders anyway jay-z's actually not a stranger to these business tactics pretending a product is good when it's eh. he's done this with his alcohol company his other alcohol company his clothing brand pretty much a lot of things he has his hand in business for now this isn't a bad thing in fact it's basically what a majority of commercials are it's why companies hire celebrities to like use their stuff except jay-z is both the company and the celebrity now let's take things a step further and talk about how Jay-Z first came into the rap game. He actually used this exact same strategy to become famous. Pretending something's amazing, it's actually worth nothing, but getting big companies to buy into. And that something was his record label, Rockefeller Records. Now, I made this part of the video another day and I'm too lazy to- So Jay-Z, like, he's making, like, making, like, something, like, work. Make Jay-Z making something, you know, work. Yeah, I get what I'm trying to say. Jay-Z's making something work, you know? is make it like people like you know jacket you know but over so here you go now jay-z's no stranger to this business strategy in fact he did this when he first started coming up as a rapper as jay-z says he's a hustler from the streets when he learned that you can hustle legally he said oh snap so he went to record labels and said yo i'm about to be the biggest thing here's my they said who are you they said like i was saying i'm jay-z i'm about to be said Jay-Z said, y'all ain't even listen to my album yet. And the funny thing is, Jay-Z had a legendary album on his hands, but nobody was trying to hear it. They said, we good, Jazzy. He said, first of all, my name is Jay-Z. Second of all, y'all gonna see. So Jay-Z had a problem. Nobody was trying to sign up. So Jay-Z does what he knows best, hustles. He gets his two friends, Dame Dash and Biggs Burke, and they create their own independent record label called Rockefeller Records. They didn't have no money really. At least not enough to go on crazy tours or have like a whole album release. But they did have some cash from selling. So what did they do? They spent it on clothes, jewelry, cars, all that. Now from the outside looking in, it looks financially irresponsible. But they did this for a reason. Remember the strategy. Make the business look good and people buy into it. Well, the business in this case is the record label they started. They was walking in the club, spending money, all that. People was like, who them? Somebody would slide in and be like, that's Jay-Z and them from Rockefeller Records. They'd be like, who are you? Don't worry about that. Jay-Z? Y'all ain't heard of Jay-Z? I'd be like, nah, should I have? Dude would slide out and be like, y'all missing out. they pay the DJ to call their name. That's Jay-Z and them from Rockefeller Records. And they were looking like a big deal. And plus, remember, the album and the music was really good. In reality, they're selling the music. Recent Doubt, right? right? If y'all listen to Recent Doubt, let me know. What's that classic D? How, what would y'all rate it? Scale, scale of 1 through 10. What, 1 through 10. What would y'all rate that album? They got the trunk of their car. So the music starts getting out there. Record labels are like, yo, who is this Jay-Z from Rockefeller Records? Jay-Z! Jay-Z like, huh? They said, um, you want to sign to our record label? Jay-Z be like, no, I'm already signed to Rockefeller Records. Record labels are like, well, we usually give artists 5% of their own. Like, created his own label. 
Music. What if we give you 10? Record labels are a scam too. One of the legal scams. Jay Z said 50 50. Record labels said 50. What? Jay Z would be like, okay, fine. They'd be like, wait, 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 wait. Universal eventually signs with a 50 50 deal with Rockefeller Records, which was insane at the time. Especially because he only did this by pretending he was bigger than he was. Now, a lot of times in scams, People will pretend they're bigger than they are, and the other party will get nothing. Like what Jay-Z did in the whole title thing. Jay-Z got 300 million, Jack Dorsey got sued. But in this case, even though Jay-Z finessed a 50-50 deal, his music was actually really good. So Universal gets a big payout because of it. This gives him a lot of credibility, which later allowed him to snake one of his friends that I told you about earlier, Dame Dash. Now saying that he snaked him is debatable. Dame Dash was kind of a loose cannon and he was making Jay-Z look really bad, but that's a story for another day. Actually, I touched on that story. I'll probably put the video somewhere. Now, at the end of the day, as the business people say, it's just business. I would turn up if I got hustled like this, but I guess that's why I'm not a businessman. It takes a certain mind to be able to screw people over and just be okay with it. For the majority of us, they would probably just ring us ring us dry. And all a judge would probably say is, like the judge said to Jack's shareholders, you got licked. What Jack and Jay-Z did to y'all was certainly in bad faith. But don't hate the player, hit the game. Anyway, let me end this video by saying I appreciate every single one of y'all that be subscribing. If you're not subscribing, then subscribe right now. And keep an eye out for live content on Twitch. I'm going to make that a place where we can just like hang out and like talk and blah, 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 blah. Anyway, peace. Okay, that's the vid, bro. So, yeah, bro, let me know what y'all think about what Jay-Z like uh, allegedly did. What y'all think about Jay-Z, bro? Do y'all think he is a smart businessman? Like, how, how do y'all feel? Oh, yeah. And that's a rapper, bro. What would y'all... Do y'all think Jay-Z overrated as a rapper or underrated as a rapper? Let me know down in the comment section down below what, what y'all think about Jay-Z, bro. Okay, but make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe. Y'all know the vibes. Wave your chicken on you are.